This is a good example of a shortcut question. The SAT puts these in every module for math especially because they know that some people are gonna look at this and have an instant answer and be able to get this in like five seconds. But if you don't have that instant answer, if you don't see the shortcut, you can still solve this just more thoroughly doing more algebra. But the reason they put these questions here is to slow down the people who don't know math and to give an advantage to the people who do. So hopefully you're in that latter category. Basically what you're supposed to see here that is if we need the same solution. Basically, it's kind of like the same equation. So what we could do is noticing that 2x minus 3 is kind of two of the choices as well helps just divide by 7. If we did that to both sides, what would happen? Well, the left side would just be 2x minus 3 and 63 divided by 7. You should know that that's going to work out, right? If you know your times tables, you know that dividing by 7 is going to work out nicely to give you 9, right? And, and then that's it. That's the answer. Now, the reason it has the same solutions is if we continued the process of solving this, we would get the same value of x. So 2x minus 3 equals 9, right? So what would you do? You'd add 3 to both sides. You'd get 2x is equal to 12. You'd divide by 2. You'd get x is equal to 6. Right, so cool. Now if we did the same thing to the original equation, and again, I, I think that if you are not really good at math, you're gonna do this in an even longer way. You're never gonna divide by seven. You're just gonna multiply that seven in, and you're just gonna create big numbers where there's no reason for them. So 14x minus 21 is equal to 63. You add 21 to both sides, you get 14x is equal to 84. And now you gotta reach for that calculator, because do you know your 14 times tables? I certainly don't, right? So I know the answer already, but I'm gonna do it anyway, right? So 84 divided by 14, is six. So they literally have the same solution. If we did the same thing to any of these other answers, we would not get the same value of x. We get a different value. So that's what they're testing, right? This is the slow way. It's reliable. It'll get you there. But it's also introducing potential errors because there's a lot more algebra you have to do. And maybe you lose a negative. Maybe you do arithmetic incorrectly. Who knows? But also, you're losing time. So even if you get these points that way, you're, you're losing time. And so I don't, I don't really have a good piece of advice for this other than like get better at math so you can see those shortcuts. But beware, because as we move later into the section, right? So this is a question six. But if this were a question like 16, that's when shortcuts actually make me more nervous because then they give the shortcuts for people who don't know math, right? So it flips on easy questions easy questions, the shortcuts are for people who are really good at math. And so those people can confidently take those shortcuts, cut out a lot of work, and get the answer within a few seconds. But on harder questions, the shortcuts are actually for people who aren't good at math. And they're there to trap those people and to make them think they're solving in a really efficient way when actually they're not. So the, the thing with shortcuts is you really, you got to just take more SATs and get used to the way that they ask questions and find out for yourself whether taking the shortcut saves you time and points or cost you points because you take them in the wrong places and fall for traps. I'll try to make another lesson that's more detailed about this, but uh, yeah, it's, it's something to be aware of, of how the SAT works. It's not what your math teacher would have done on tests in school, but it is at the SAT. It is how the SAT decides uh, basically whether you are good at math or bad at math is they give you these opportunities to choose two paths and you gotta be good about choosing the right one.